thank you very much for a very informative, educative talk on a subject that's uh, a talk of discussion all over the world. U.S. is uh, in many ways a first-hand account, although you were not present in Turkey when the coup took place, but uh, you lived there for the past uh, four or five years. You have known Turkish society, Turkish state uh, very closely. Uh, and I entirely agree with you, with your very introductory remark that uh, we cannot support a military coup or even an attempted military coup anywhere in the world because democracy must be defended everywhere. That is the global trend and we should all in fact work towards further strengthening democracy in our own country and uh, everywhere. However, The manner in which this uh, coup took place has given rise to many questions which have not been answered and the best entity to answer them is actually the legitimate state of uh, Turkey and if it doesn't answer, that legitimacy would, be, would get eroded. Instead of answering the questions, it has used the coup as a context and a pretext for a crackdown, unprecedented crackdown on uh, a movement which enjoys a completely different reputation around the world. Uh, you know, before the talk began, uh, Professor, you made a very interesting remark uh, in our small interaction earlier. You said that this is the time when uh, the world needed a Gulen movement and needs many more such Gulen movements because here is an Islamic movement which is committed to peace, to interfaith dialogue and to an Islamic modernity. So the crackdown on the Gulen movement at this, at this time is uh, a big loss to the world as a whole. So. The government in Turkey has used this for its own narrow political end. And precisely for this reason, Indian government, I agree with you that the Indian government is, uh, is not going to accede to the demand made by the Turkish uh, government through its ambassador and here in uh, Mumbai through its consul general. But the people of India and the people of Mumbai must strongly resist any attempt for action against Gulay movement's followers and activists in India. We must stand by them, we must show our solidarity with them and uh, either in India or anywhere else in the world there's not been a single case in which these Gulay movement activists, Hizmet activists have been involved in acts of violence, acts of terror, or even spreading the ideology of terror. Absolutely. If anything, Fethullah Gulay has been a strong voice against terrorism. And friends, here I would like to I would like to read out a few lines from an article I wrote way back in 2005 in the Times of India in praise of Fethullah Gulay. What is perhaps most remarkable about Gulen is his public condemnation of violence in the name of Islam. Following the Al-Qaeda's recent terrorist attacks in London and Egypt and its similar attacks in Istanbul two years ago, the most explicit Islamic condemnation of such acts has come from Fethullah Gulen. He says, and I quote, Osama bin Laden has sullied the bright face of Islam. The reparation for the damage he has caused requires years of work. Substituting the Islamic cause for his own cravings, Bin Laden is committing monstrous acts. 
Now I have here a document, the 2015 Gandhi King Ikeda Award for Peace. The recipient is Fethullah Gule. And just one day after the terrorist attacks in the United States in 2001, on September 12, he gave out a statement in which he says, a terrorist cannot be a real Muslim, a real Muslim cannot be a terrorist. Professor, you made a very uh, apt point that uh, Fethullah Gulay is projecting the true meaning of Islam as a religion of acceptance and tolerance, that it accepts and it accepts all the prophets Absolutely. who were born before Prophet Muhammad, and uh, all of them. I'm again quoting from my article. All religions, he says, they propagate the values of love, respect, tolerance, forgiveness, compassion, human rights, peace, brotherhood, and freedom. And then he says something very profound and which you, you mentioned, <coughs> Professor. You said that uh, Fethullah Gulay says that there is no community without prophets. It's very inclusive. And I quote, most of these values are, are accorded the highest precedence in the messages brought by Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, as well as the messages of the Buddha, even Zarathustra, Lao Tzu, Confucius, and Hindu prophets. As a Muslim, I accept all prophets and books sent to different peoples throughout history and regard belief in them as an essential principle of being Muslim. That be, belief in all prophets is an essential principle of being Muslim. Yes. This is Fethullah Gulay's understanding of Islam. This is his propagation of Islam. So I refuse to believe that Fethullah Gulay had any had any hand, direct or indirect, close or remote, in instigating terrorism in Turkey, and therefore this, so, this terminology, Fethullah terrorist organization, FETO, is a fictitious organization. Fictitious. There is no such organization called Fethullah terrorist organization. It's a creation of the Turkish government to stigmatize and criminalize an organization and its leader who are propagating peace and interfaith dialogue. If any of the, if any of the followers of Fethullah Gulay in Turkey did participate in the coup attempt, then there must be a due course of law, probe, and let them be punished. And if there is any linkage with Fethullah Gulay, let that also come out, but that can only come out if the probe is is uh, is objective, transparent, uh, and follows the due course of law, which the government is not doing, and therefore it is our responsibility, friends. Democracy anywhere is is a value for all of us to defend. At the same time. Secularism, tolerance, these are also values for all of us to defend. And Turkey today is going through a crisis. We do hope that the people of Turkey will, will find the courage to defend these values, come out of this crisis, and also contribute to peace and stability around Turkey in the entire West Asian region. And uh, in deepening this understanding and this belief, you have contributed with your lecture today. Thank you very much, Professor Anwar Alam. Keep coming. And I once again welcome our friends from Turkey who are present here. And I want to reiterate that we stand by you. Thank you very much. Dr. Alam, please accept a token of appreciation from our end, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking out the time to be with us today. Thank you.
you very much for your presentation and thank you very much sir, for a wonderful opportunity that you gave me to be here.